guys, so I'm going to be telling you about my belly button piercing and the stages I had to go through to get this bad boy. So here's my belly button piercing and there is a tiny hole in the middle from when I've had it pierced three times. So I'm going to go through the story of my belly button timeline. So basically I wanted to have my belly button done when I was in secondary school. I think I was in year seven or eight and everyone was getting their belly button done at that time and I really wanted to have a piercing and I didn't have any facial piercings at that point. So I wanted to have something I could hide and just keep to myself and have like a personal piercing so whenever I got naked I could see it on my tummy. And I could also choose to show it to certain people who ever wanted to see it type of thing. So yeah. So basically I was 14 when I wanted to have it done. After begging my mum for about like half a year she eventually gave in and she said okay as long as you stop talking about it then you can have it done i bugged her so much of nagging and asking her can i have my belly button done can i have my belly button done and i used to like say to her every time she um every time my mum used to buy something for the price of the piercing would cost i would i would say to her oh you could have got a belly button piercing for that and then she got really pissed off and then she like let me have it done. So I was 14 and um, one day on a Saturday, I think it was a Saturday, I uh, went into the piercing shop, my local piercing shop, and had it pierced. The pain wasn't that bad. She marked it up and it was perfectly straight. It had the right amount of skin in the side. The average size belly button bar is a 12 mil to a 10 mil, and then it was a 1.6 thickness. So yeah, I had that pierced and it looked really pretty. I had like a turquoise gem in it and I was really proud of myself. It didn't hurt as much as I thought it was going to be, but it was really quick, so it didn't really matter. And then the scabby stuff started to appear. So after I had it pierced, a couple of days after I had it pierced, it was all healing fine and everything, but then I got a like a little red bubble on the top of the hole. So if I show you, on the top part of the hole here, there was a huge bubble. And it wasn't filled with anything, it was just kind of like a swollen red bubble. I don't know. It didn't pass or anything, but I knew it wasn't like 100% right and something was going on. I waited a couple of months for it to settle down. I was giving it salt soaks and cleaning it twice a day and it didn't heal. It wouldn't heal. So I done some research and I discovered that my body was rejecting the piercing. So obviously it wasn't meant to be. After the red bubble appeared on there, it started to push the barbell out of my tummy. So every day I would look at it and like slowly, every other day, the skin in between the barbell would be getting smaller and smaller. So starting from a 12 mil, and by the time I took the bar out, there was only six mil of skin, so it like half the size. I told my mum, and she, she used to be a nurse, so my mum kind of knows a bit more about like the body and stuff than I do. So I told my mum, and she looked at it, and she said, yeah, take it out. If you take it out, then I'll let you have it re-pierced, and you can wait until it's healed, and then have it redone. So that's why I was done. It took about a year to close up. I was left with like a little hole on the top, like kind of like a really small pinprick. You couldn't see it, but it didn't work that time. The first time round, it didn't work. Yeah. The skin in between the bar, in the middle, there was only about six millimeters of skin there. So yeah, it was really prone to getting ripped out and stuff and I didn't really want it to like stick out and get ripped out because that wouldn't have ended up good. After I took it out and it healed, then I went back into the same place and I said, okay, can I have my belly button done again, please? And then she done it. The second time round, it hurts a lot more because it's going through scar tissue, so the needle takes a little bit more shoving to get through. But it doesn't take any longer than it would like when I had it pierced the first time it 
takes the same amount of time but just a little bit more painful but it's done in seconds so it doesn't make any difference and I was really proud of it I was chuffed about having my belly button done again and you know a year later after having it done the first time and not going right then I thought hey it's got to go right the second time round so I cleaned it twice a day with um sea salt and um, boiling water and cotton buds and cleaned around the hole and everything and it was looking good and then the same thing happened my body decided to reject the piercing it didn't have a really fatty bubble on the top of the hole but it started to push itself out so the skin in the middle wasn't as thick and that annoyed me i wanted to have the perfect belly button piercing with the perfect amount of skin in between the bar. There was no point in me buying all these belly bars and then them not fitting and having to buy custom made belly bars to the size of a six millimeter. And that sucks, because that's like even less of the thickness of your eyebrow if you had your eyebrow pierced. And it wasn't a good look. So after having that done for about six months I realized no it's not gonna work so I took it out and then it took at least a year and a half to heal up after that for some reason it just took twice as long and I was waiting for ages but I was just saying to myself that the outcome by the end of the time I have to wait I would have a nice belly button piercing so yeah my mum said it isn't gonna work you can try one last time but if it doesn't work the third time then it's just going to be a waste of money and it's just going to keep happening but something like inside me kind of told me like it's got to work the third time it's got to work the third time I've had it done twice already now and the scar tissue was getting quite thick like you could feel where the previous holes were and you could see them as well so the scarring like in my head I thought to myself where well, the scarring where the old belly button piercing was it had to kind of hold the new one and kind of prevent it from pushing out of the skin if there's like more scarring there I don't know that's what I kind of thought to myself so I went back in there a year and a half later um, probably about three years in total from when I had it done the first time the lady in there she was like don't I recognize you you came in for your lip and belly button and I was like yeah so um, she remembered me and then she said to me, well, okay, I'll only charge you for the belly button bar and not the piercing because I know that if it doesn't work, then it's just not meant to happen. So I was like, okay, so I got the piercing for £10. Um, normally it would be 25 So I thought, hey, why not? Just go for it. It doesn't matter if it hurts. It's just, you know, go for it. It's done by a professional. So... If it's not going to work, it's just my problem, not not anyone else's. And I've just got a retarded body. I had it done this third time and it hurt a lot. Like, I was lying there and I was gritting my teeth and I was like, ah, it hurt. But it only took about 10 minutes from getting in there and getting out from the time it was done. So it didn't take long and I was, like, happy with it. I asked her to make this skin in the middle of the bar bigger than she normally would so instead of doing it at the average size I asked her to do about two millimeters more thickness in the middle of the bar just in case if it did reject it would have more of a chance to have the thickness in between to not go so small. I um, cleaned it and I looked after it and then eventually I got myself a belly button piercing. It didn't reject, it didn't even move or push out of the skin, hardly anything at all. But the only disadvantage about having it done three times is that you can see the hole from the previous belly button piercing and if I show you, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. So there's the belly button piercing. There is a tiny, tiniest hole right in the middle and if you can see that, half of the thickness of the skin in the middle, that was how thick it was to start off with and that is so prone to getting ripped out. You, you, you probably can, like, you know, already know why I got it redone. A bit of a dodgy story, a bit of a long story, but yeah, I had my belly button pierced three times 
And if any of you guys are going through the same problem, um, I would suggest that if it doesn't work after the third time, then just give up because it's just not meant to happen. Some people's bodies are different, some people's reject, some people's don't. Um, everyone when I was at school, they were all having their belly button done and they were all healed perfectly fine. It was just like I was the odd one out that happened to have a fat red bubble on top of my hole. Yeah, and it just pushed itself out really slowly and just started to look not very nice. As long as you clean it and look after it and don't get it infected, um, you will see the signs of it being rejected. Just make sure you don't get an infection or you will fuck up your belly button. So yeah guys, um, I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you're considering to have your belly button pierced, um, you can go for it, but there is risks. Just the most popular risk is, is it going to reject on me or not? Because there is a quite a few people I've researched about online and they've had the same thing happen so and it's quite I have never heard anyone talk about this type of problem but it does happen so okay guys um yeah that's about it so say goodbye to my belly button there we go so it's all good I can twist it and everything it's back to normal but yeah so it's my belly button Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll speak to you guys soon. Bye guys!